Director of Institute of Archaeology and Ethnology Polish Academy of Science, with Dr. Dagmara Vera, Dr. Iwona Sobkowiak Tabaka, and Katarzyna Kerneder Gubała, proudly presents lecture from conference Flint in Time and Space, Time and Space in Flint. Welcome to everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. First of all, thank you for the kind invitation to come here to have the opportunity and honor to present a paper together with my colleagues from Polish Academy of Sciences, uh, geologists. And by the way, congratulations to the organizers of this meeting. Um, to the Institute and to, to, to our colleagues. Um, my intention is to uh, turn a little bit your attention, put your attention into the Carpathians, into the North Carpathian zone, into the mountainous world, which, uh, which was uh, long time understood as an empty area, not non-settled area empty also in the sense of the presence of uh, silica deposites, um, which can be interesting for prehistoric men. What will be discussed uh, generally? First, a little bit of history of research, um, about the de delay research. Then, some hypotheses as a result of skepticism, which is uh, easy to understand at that time. Then some differences between uh, the region outside of the mountains, the geology with Flint, with Krakow, Częstochow, Jurassic, Flint, Chocolate, Świeczikow, etc. versus this, um, the beds, known uh, from the mountainous um, uh, range. Uh, then the place of Mikusiewice and Bircha raw materials in prehistory as the latest uh, sorts, latest varieties of such beds, of such uh, raw materials discovered, described uh, here in the Carpathians. Leading discoveries, closing remarks. But so and so, we must start, we must remember some um, very important, crucial moments in the history and the uh, role of the uh, local radiolar light. The Polish Pinin, you see, the peak Tricolone, uh, uh, is an element, as you know of the um, Pienin equipment belt, starting by, by Vienna, um, con continuing in Western Slovakia, and then in Poland, and then again in Slovakia. Uh, we must remember uh, the first uh, hypothesis a little bit um, with a negative tint that did that mean, uh, this mean um, here no raw material um, occur which, which could be, uh, which could give the positive effect by the um, uh, stone proce pro processing. Um, we can emphasize also another uh, direction, the some hypotheses or factors with a li light positive tint. Why is the study of raw materials here in the, in the mountains perhaps easier as in, in lowland or, or in upland? Because we have here various types of rocks, we have easy distinguished variation, the quality is different, and no erratic material is here. It's also important. And m we can, with the risk, formulate following hypothesis: the raw materials is here better accessible um, as in another uh, regions. It is. Uh, we should remember the first um, um, study uh, oriented for the radiolarite in the Polish Pinine 
And remember the paper published by Professor Kozlowski, Stanislav Kowalski, with the opinion uh, uh, presented by Professor Christoph Birkenmeier, um, that the Pienini, that you are right, from Polish part of this Pienini clip and belt were too tectonically fractured uh, to be processed in the Stone Age. Uh, later on, 1972, Anna Dagnan, according to one flag only, found in the in the Marcinikovice in, in Dunai, it's a river basin, uh, presented uh, uh, the opinion that Pinini Radiolares could have been picked out from the bed seat of the river Dunayets. 1975, Professor Schild, Professor, uh, Professor Schild, uh, presented another opinion, or similar opinion, in the Historia Jem Polski, um, that it exists a possibility, unconfirmed possibility, um, that the Polish radiolarite can be used uh, in the past. And this information came from, from uh, Professor Chmielewski, uh, as we can find this in the literature. Uh, I think the crucial moment for this di di discussion, this de debate, was the discovery of um, the first stone processing site dated uh, to late Paleolithic in Swamovce Nizhne, in the Dunayet Gorge in, in Pienine, in 1976. Now, maybe a brief overview only how many uh, beds we know from the Polish Carpathians, among them Ladiola Wright, then um, many Nitron stone deposites, no, also from Romania, from Eastern Slovakia, then Dinov Mar, Cergova uh, Holland stone, what was today discussed, I think, and Bielschaflind and Mikusowice. Um, Constant. Uh, we can now uh, create here. We can we can create here an independent province of silica materials. And all these uh, beds, all these places, um, all these materials is doc this material is documented in the archaeological inventories from different times. Now to the Mikosovice Hornstone. First, the geological uh, position, Cretaceous, mm, and uh, some still open queries, like here in Yashenica, uh, by Michelinica or Lance Corona or uh, many other. You see tectonically uh, disturbed um, layers, you see layers, you don't see the nodules. This is also a uh, fact with a great importance. By the way, uh, the recent, recent uh, you, you use opportunity to, to do something with this very hard material, very good material for drilling, perhaps, and uh, some mm, uh, sites which document um, uh, the presence of artifacts made of Mikushovice Hornstone. All here um, represent Mesolithic uh, settlement. One of them excavated last year uh, is Sokovice Gościbia uh, with uh, a series of imported flint. The Jurassic flint is an imp import here in this area. Uh, only one radiolarite, lapesium of Luta type, most probably, and some artifacts made of, of um, uh, uh, Mikusowice uh, Hornstone. By the way, have a look, please, please note how different phase um, we can observe here. Style gray variety, dark variety, uh, flint like variety, green, greenish, and uh, 
some um, uh, structures inside. This is most probably Komornica site, which is very nice, very, very, very careful prepared core, uh, triangles, etc. Uh, and uh, you see, uh, the, 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 from the statistical point of view, around 20% um, artifacts uh, have been made uh, from Mikusowice Honstam, a local uh, uh, raw material. Now, some words to the Birtschaftlind, um, which is the second, at latest, uh, recognized uh, raw material in the Polish Carpathians. Very strange, very enigmatic, long time for us. And I may have to remember the first contact with this material. Uh, this happened in Toporec, in Spiska Magura, in the northern. Slovakia, close to the border <coughs> with Poland. By the way, rock crystal is also here, but who knows, is this an artifact or no? It's not so important now. Have a look here, please. Not transparent stone with some uh, uh, low structures, gray structures, um, unknown, generally unknown at that time. Then, this, 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 the first contact uh, happened on the end, uh, in the 19, 90s. Then came, uh, nine, also in the 90s, to Huomcha <coughs> discovery on, this, uh, on the bank of, of Sun River. Mm. Here, a big drilling structure uh, uh, of Magdalenian had been found with some refittings and with a series of also enigmatic, difficult to determine material. According to uh, my colleagues, according to Paszkowski and Waptash, we were, uh, this, uh, they were uh, able to uh, determine this is something new. This is a Birtschaflin. They call this Birtschaflin. Um, material dated to uh, Paleocene. Uh, here, Huomcha is was difficult because uh, all artifacts are um, patinated here, and strong patinated. Uh, but uh, you can see somewhere here some dots, some, stru some structures, which can remember us the Schwetschehof effect. Some gray or dark white, if you can say it, dark white, dots. Uh, also, a cortex is here very strange, mm. sandy-like, the sandy-like cortex. I brought uh, some um, concretions here. We have some samples here. And my colleagues, Anna Kraszewska, Magda Cieśla, uh, will show you during the workshop tomorrow this collection. May I invite you <laughs> to to, the, mm, uh, to this exposition? The rest, are some examples from Huomcha. Uh, it's too light here now, but uh, you can see some structures. You see uh, the Magdalenian uh, features, the Macro Buren, uh, Lacan Burens, etc. Uh, the exercise was difficult because um, also typical Schwitzerhof blade was found here. So um, in the first moment we thought this is altogether the, the all artifacts have have, uh, have been made from Schwitzerhof uh, flint, but this was a wrong uh, determination. On this map you see uh, uh, geological points, the points where from which uh, the samples have been taken, and sites with um, Birtscha flint, mostly undetermined from chronological point of view. Some of them perhaps are linear band pottery culture, but we know also 
more sites like Virjavice, for instance, um, also Magdalenian, like Toporets, perhaps, it's also Magdalenian. Uh, so slowly, slowly, we can formulate with risk a hypothesis that the Magdalenian man was interested, very serious, in this material. Stratigraphy, Paleocene, and um, a little bit of uh, geology is, in this case, very inter very important <coughs> fact is uh, for correct uh, determination is the presence of lithotamnia uh, from the Polish uh, flints. Mm, in the Polish flints, you you can uh, the lithotamnia are not at present. This is only one case that. Um, the siliceous rock in the Polish territory um, uh, has such uh, fauna, lithotamia. And foraminifera, this is not this is not very diagno diagnostic, help us only by the, deter the age determination, of course. But for uh, the, uh, the determination of the Bilger flint, the, in the first line, important is the presence of Lithotamnia. Some examples, you will see this tomorrow, I hope, uh, and have a look. The, the one variety, not transparent, the second variety from here, trans transparent with this typical structures. Uh, accidentally, also in the Chemna cave, we have found uh, a few. Uh, artifacts from Mikokian time made most probably from this same um, flint. Uh, to collect uh, other uh, Magdalenian uh, um, sites with this material, uh, Stara Lubovnia uh, in the upper Poprat river basin should be uh, remember. This is the view from the site into the, the castle, and now the site itself, somewhere here, uh, excavated together with mm, Slovakian colleagues, with Dots and Sojak. Um, here, a lot of radiolarite artifacts uh, have been found among them, but also some implements made of th this well known at, uh, at that time. Bircha flint. A uh, burin here and another one made of Krakow Jurassic flint. And please compare the both here. Uh, this is not very difficult to uh, distinguish this material, I think, now. And the last example, also Magdalenian from another uh, period, uh, late Magdalenian, most probably. Very small inventory uh, discovered in the last seasons I seasons in Wazowa Cave, also with um, with uh, Bircha flint implements. We can ask: Are there tendencies to exploration of particular local deposits by the population of certain periods or cultures on the ground of the interest? Mesolithic man is oriented for. <coughs> Mikushavice Holmstone, Magdalenian is oriented for Bircha, perhaps. Mm. I would like to, to say yes, but it is of course with, um, with a risk. Uh, uh, I think a tendency is uh, to note, uh, but the scale of this tendency is unclear yet. So, uh, this was the overview. I would like to, um, to underline the role of Carpathians as a province of raw material and, um, and um, emphasize the still not enough known um, position of both raw materials, Vinkushavice and Bircha, um, described as the latest um, on this territory. Thank you for your attention.